Imusa edobo shirio. Weva the katondo ya chakumi ngo imuna. Weva the katondo ya kugavi lide. Weva the katondo ye ya kuagara. Oye ya fa kuwebi bibi ya fe. Oyo e ya tononola mchikori go chechibi. Father we thank you. We bless your name Jehovah for the great things that you've done. We magnify you King of glory. We commit everything in your hand. Even this program today let it come powerful. Let it minister to somebody. May signs and wonders accompany this program. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout a big Amen, Auntie Jehovah. Auntie Amanya and Pity were Pastor Mukisa Patrick. I want to remind you that I'm Pastor Mukisa Patrick. Okuvaku Divine Focus Ministries. From Divine Focus Ministries. Now we are going to talk about something. And this is so fundamental in the gospel and uh, things to do with God. That is the gospel of Christ Jesus. We are in a dispensation where the gospel has been missed. Our sin, we are going to give clarity between gospel and gospel. But I want to remind you, there is like a sin line between gospel and gospel. But what makes a difference is gospel is of God and from God. I mean what God has done for us. And he has given to us free. That's what we call gospel. Now when we go to gospel, gospel is all about man. Praise the name of the Lord. Before I go further in that line, I want to assure you that the gospel of Christ has power. The gospel has power to turn around lives. The gospel has power to heal every kind of sickness. The gospel is simply the power of God. When I talk about the power of God, I mean the miracle working power. The power that created the universe. The power that can make the lame to walk. The power that can elevate somebody from total poverty to total prosperity. The power that can paralyze every curse and condemnation and witchcraft upon somebody. That is the power of God. And that is the power at work in the gospel. Now friends out there, you've heard the gospel for many years. People have preached. They have preached until they are preached. But there is a simple clarity I want to give today. That is clarity between gospel and gospel. We thank God for the media, TVs, uh, internet, and radios through which we use to outreach you with the gospel. But with experience, I've learned that most of the preachers, few are preaching gospel. Actually, preaching is for gospel and uh, 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 speaking is gospel. Many people take a lot of time to speak gospel. So they say they are pastors. Others say they are bishops and apostles and the likes. We have to go back to the real, real gospel. I want to read for you a scripture in Romans chapter 1 verses 16 and 17. 
And I will also read another scripture in the book of John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. You know, we are looking at the reason why is it so that miracles are no longer happening. You follow the gospel every now and then, but you don't see a difference in life. Higher the chances you might be thinking that you're listening to gospel, yet you're listening to gospel. It is only the gospel of Christ which has power. Now we're going to read in the book of Romans chapter 1 verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Now let me also read in this other version that you can get uh, a message very clear. This is what Apostle Paul wrote in this episode called the Romans. So I am not, actually I'm reading KJV version which says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I thank God for KJV because it gives the more expounded message. Uh, 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 when Paul says that the gospel of Christ, he's giving us the assurance which gospel, the specification of the gospel that can cause a difference. Those of you who use NIV version, it does not uh, bring it all this far. But let's just continue. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is God's power to salvation to everyone who believes from the like Jews and also to the Greek. Amen. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from face to face as it is written that just shall live by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I, I want us to look at something. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Oh my God. The righteousness of God is revealed, is, 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 is kind of uh, manifested. Praise the name of the Lord. So if the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, and the Bible says in Isaiah 54 that in the righteousness you will be established. That's what the Bible says that in righteousness. And now we have learned that the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. We need the gospel, the real gospel of Christ and his finished work. It is that gospel that carries power. I started by telling you that gospel has power. Actually, gospel in simple terms is the package that carries the power of God. But where are people missing from? 
Many people are no longer preaching gospel, they preach gospel. Today I want to help you, dear listeners and followers. Tell you that gospel is about what God has done. And gospel is about what man has done. Some of you, you go to churches, you congregate to hear the word of God, and as you prepare your souls to receive a message, a preacher comes and he narrates about what you did, what your, grand, uh, your great grands did, and things of that kind. That is not gospel. That is gospel. Some of you have been even told that demons, their nature, where they sleep, who they married, everything concerning demons, curses, and whatever, that is gospel. Pray the name of the Lord. Should I want to help you that in these days of the lockdown, you will know the difference between gospel and gospel. The Bible has said that in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Praise the Lord. Meaning that now in, in, in gospel, 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 gospel cannot reveal uh, the righteousness of God. Gospel reveals the sinfulness of man. Praise the name of the Lord. God reveals how sinful you are. But God reveals the righteousness of God. And the more God's righteousness is revealed, it is the more you get exposed to it. And the more you are exposed to the righteousness of God, is the more you are advantage and chance to utilize it. So those uh, who listen to what we have called gospel they have no access to God's righteousness. That's why they remain sin conscious. They, they, they are sin conscious. Yet the gospel comes to make you righteous conscious. It is after being righteous conscious that's when you can walk with God perfectly without fear. What the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Friends, I want to remind you something. You want healing. You want a miracle. You want anything from God. You want to see the manifestation of God's power. The key to the power of God it is gospel. But what is gospel? Gospel is simply what Christ has done for us and given us. Now I want to read for you in the book of John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Pray the name of the Lord. I want to read that scripture for you because I'm sure that it is going to help you. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Mm. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, mm. but to serve the world through him. Mm. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Mm-hmm. Or, but whoever does not believe stands mm. condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the God is one and only Son. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoever believes in this man called Jesus will never be condemned. Actually, verse 17 here says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Praise the name of the Lord. Dear listeners and those who are following, you are in a program called Know What You Believe. We are now trying to help you get clarity between gospel and gospel. And for your information, I, I can say that over 85% of the preachers and the ministers we have, they preach gospel, not gospel. Now listen to another, con- another thing here. The Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus did not come to condemn. But the prophets in the Old Testament used to condemn. Because the law condemns but grace saves. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Now when Jesus came, he gave us the grace. What the Bible says that he came full of grace. And out of his fullness we have received the grace upon grace. Now, this is what I mean. When you find somebody claiming that he's preaching gospel and he's preaching condemnation, read for him John chapter 3, verse 17, which says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn. Pray the name of the Lord. So gospel is not about condemnation. Gospel is about love. In verse 16 he says, For God so loved the world. God started loving the world when it was still in the depths of the sin. Praise the name of the Lord. So gospel reveals the love of God. You know, when you preach condemnation, you always make people feel guilty. You always make people feel that they are not worthy for God. You will grieve their hearts and they will get internal wounds and they will end up being sick in the soul. Yet gospel is meant to bring life to the soul. Gospel brings healing to the soul. Praise the name of the Lord. And once the soul is healed, you will be alive. You will have life. You will move on. You will enjoy your faith. You will not be moved. You will not fear. You will be bored. When you are spiritually alive, you are in the image of God. 
The devil will also fear you. Sicknesses will run away from you. Demons will not see you from a distance and they will vanish. Praise the name of the Lord. We have a big problem in church today. People see it and a pastor stands to preach to them and he only sees demons. Such pastors who see demons, they are also demon possessed because demonic eyes can see demonic stuff. Just like physical eyes can see physical stuff, only God's eyes can see things of God. Many born agains do not know the truth, but they confess Jesus. Let the Bible says that when you know the truth, the truth has helped. Shall set you free. That scripture starts saying in John chapter 8. Yokana isure yomunana. John chapter 8. Let me start from the 31st. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him. If you abide in my words, you will truly be my disciples. Now listen, he's speaking to the Jews who believed in him. That if you abide in my words, you'll be my true disciple. Meaning, on top of believing in Jesus, there is also another step of abiding in his teachings. For you to be his true disciple. One time I preached about a sermon called, Whose disciple are you? Whose disciple are you? We're in salvation when we have born again, but they are disciples of Moses. That's why every time they see guilt, they see the Bible says that 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 the Bible Although they read scriptures, but they still judge themselves and also others. Praise the name of the Lord. Stop judging yourself. Because God did not send his son to judge. Regardless of the fact that they believe in Jesus. They have not yet taken a step of abiding in the word of Jesus. Jesus told the Jews who believed in him that if you abide in my word, you are my true disciple. And, and you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want you to follow those steps. The first step is believing in him. The second step is abiding in his word. And the third step is knowing the truth. And lastly, you are free. Let me say it again. The first step is believing in Jesus. I thank God for that because all of you who are born again, you believe in Jesus. But you also have to take another step of abiding in his word. And you cannot abide in the word of Jesus unless you know his word. You know, many people are confusing the gospel and the Bible. They don't get the difference between gospel and Bible. The Bible is simply a Greek word meaning a book. Praise the name of the Lord. 
but gospel is actually in Greek it is called eugerizo meaning good news in Greek it means the news is too good to be believed I'm going to give an example or, uh, uh, to demonstrate what gospel is. Just take an example, you, you did a criminal case, for example, like killing somebody. And you are taken to court. And you know very well that the crime you committed is you're going to be sentenced to death. Sentenced to death. When you're there and very sure that you're going to die. That the sin that we had done its sentence was death. And you were starting to think about the death you're going to. But they've taken away. The he will have the power to pray. He will have the power to dance. One time in Acts chapter 3. The Bible talks about a man who was a crippled beggar. Now Peter and John came Peter, and this man signaled that he wanted money. Point blank, Peter told him, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give. In Jesus' name, raise up and walk. Immediately, his crippledness, his lameness was no more. He stood up on his feet and praised the name of the Lord. Even though he was not given money, the man was praised so much. Because what he got was better than him. But again, many of you were not told what you got. That's why many born again are very gloomy as though they are not born again. But now we are gloomy. They look sorrow. Today I want to tell you that the price was paid. Bible chega mamu alumbi mo na ne mo tevai kocha kunenge zewa bali mo Christ. Tia ha kare mo sumbe biombi uli. There is one who is saying that Musa. But why am I poor? Why is it so that I don't have a beautiful wife? Why is it so that my marriage is not working out? Others look at the situations they are passing through and think they are very serious. I want to tell you that you're not a sinner. Because Christ takes. Now you eat them. But what you're passing through, oh, you're passing through it. For the glory of God to be manifested. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Why won't you say that? There is a blind man in John 9. They asked Jesus that who of his parents sinned? Yes, on Abagamba. Jesus said Jesus said that none of his parents sinned but he is like this so that the glory of God will be manifested. In short when you're born again, no, so and your sins are forgiven, all the situations that come in your life, it is a package full of the glory of God in your life. And you will be blessed. When you look at this, it will be blessed. It is a package full of the glory of God in your life. For that problem is not to take her off, it is to take her off. It is to take her off. It is to take her off. 
it takes a step for you to understand that this problem is there so that the glory of God will be manifested into my life. Now I want to pray for some of you people. You have, according to what we have shared in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, have shared that the gospel of Christ carries the power of God. Remember in Isaiah 55 verses 11, which says that once God sends his word, it can't return to him void. It must accomplish its mission. It has to finish that Today the Lord has made it clear. I take this opportunity to be reminded that in the power of Jesus Christ, it is where the power of God is. And in the gospel, it is the one that manifests the righteousness of God. And in the gospel, it is where we have the confirmation that we were forgiven. And this is what is called the gospel. That Jesus died on the cross. And he took away all the sins. And whoever believes in him, the Christ that rose from the dead is in us. <laughs> When he sits in you, all the demons will take over. All the demons will take over. But there is still a reason as to why you are not running it. Because you yourself, you have not yet known what Jesus is. Satan is still using that reason. Reason. Okay. It is the right time for you to do as Jesus said. The scripture is in the right hand. It says that as Jesus is on earth, that is how we are. Pray the name of the Lord. Step your hands, close your eyes, open up your soul and receive this prayer. Prove that you are God. I command healing to whoever is sick. I release it powerfully in your body. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus. I pray that the Lord I serve, the miracle working God, the sovereign Father, the owner of the universe, will meet you right away at your point of need. In your house where you are, our God is omnipresent. I mean, He's right there. He's at work. So He's invisible, but He's working. His word is alive and active, it is sharper than a double edged sword. I know it has penetrated every corner of the world. Friends who are watching us from America, those in Canada, friends in Australia, friends in UK, the whole of Europe and Africa, those in Dubai, I bring you before the Lord of the cluster. I speak the power of God to turn around your life, to bless you, to increase you, to sustain you. Oh my God, to protect you against this deadly pandemic, you will not die, your business will not deteriorate. Thank you for keeping with us. May you please share this sermon that other people can also connect to the truth of the gospel. It is gospel that carries the power of God and it is the power of God that manifests miracles. So the more we are exposed to gospel, it's the more we connect with the power of God. Last warning, be careful, listen to gospel, not gospel. God bless you.